Now I would like to go deeper into time code. This shows us the actual position at which the player is located. And if I click here with the mouse, a pop-up appears. Time code jump. And in here, I can type a new position directly. To do this, I can use either the mouse by going here and changing the time with the mouse wheel, or by typing in an exact time location. The divisions are hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. In my case, we can see that the location is 1 minute, 34 seconds, and 19 frames. If I wish to change the minutes, I can either click here and use the mouse wheel to change it, or I can type a new value in directly by using the number pad and typing in order the correct numbers. For example, for 2 minutes, 10 seconds and no frames, I just start with the largest numbers and descend down by typing 021000, and I do not have to type the colon. Now that this number has been inserted by using the jump command, I can make Edius control the player and spool to the correct location. This can take a small while as the player has to react. Edius now shows the correct position. Here it has a small pre-roll setting, so if I started, we would reach the correct position quickly. This is obviously useful if I have a basic understanding of what is on my tape and where it is located. If this is the case, I can just enter the timecode position and Edius will go directly to it. In addition to typing in the absolute timecode position, we can also type in a relative number. So for example, if I wish to jump one minute ahead, I can click here and use the plus symbol and type in 010000. When I enter this, it is updated. And if I then use the jump command, the tape will be spooled one minute further. This takes place in the background. Likewise, you can also use the minus symbol to jump backwards in time by the same method. So now we see that Edius has scrolled one minute further. One thing to note is that for Edius to work with timecode, the tape must have timecode striped on it from beginning to end and continuously. If this isn't the case, for example if I had recorded and stopped and not gone to the correct end position, the camera may have written new timecode and hence, you may have multiple identical timecode locations available, and this is clearly not a good thing. A small tip for those working with DV or HDV is to run the tape through completely once to stripe it with timecode, and to make sure you have one single continuous timecode. Then when recording the required media on the tape, the timecode will not be overwritten. This means you don't have to worry about not having a single continuous timecode track, and you will avoid any issues later.